Dear students, I hope you are all well and studying in your home. Last few weeks, we discussed about structure of flower and pollination and reproduction in flower. Now, in next step or in next chapter, we will understand the structure and germination of seeds okay as you know seeds are mature ovule okay in last chapter we already discussed about it so in this chapter we uh, you will be understand the structure of dicot and monocot seeds okay germination of seeds their types and condition for seed germination okay so first in the life of flowering plants seeds are very important structure as they help in the formation of new plants a seed is a mature ovule after fertilization the ovule develops rapidly after fertilization using the food reserves in addition to the development of new plants seeds also help in the dispersal of species as well as overcoming unfavorable conditions okay so if we talk about the structure of seed so all seeds have some common features though they are vary in size shape color and some other features a typical seed is differentiated into three parts okay a normal seed is differentiated into three parts seed coat embryo and stored food so first we read about the seed coat each seed is covered by a protective covering called seed coat it develops from the integument of ovule okay you have to remember the structure of ovule so you understand that how seed coat is formed it develops from integument of ovule the seed coat is differentiated into an outer tough protective testa and inner thin tegmen okay the testa protects the seed from desiccation bacteria fungi and insects on the seed is present a scar called helium a scar uh, you will be see when you uh, see any seed okay so you can easily see this scar helium it represents the point of attachment of seed with its stalk okay adjustment to the helium is present a minute opening called sorry minute opening called micropyle okay you already know what is the micropyle it is the opening for the pollen in ovary absorption ovule, ovule okay absorption of water as well as exchange of gases take place through the micropyle during germination of seed the micropyle is not easily seen in dry seed but if a seed soaked in water is pressed gently some water and air bubbles ooze out through this pore and it can be easily located okay you can see after soaking a seed so if you see the structure of a chandlai seed in this we read about this seed coat till now okay now we read about the embryo an embryo is defined as a young miniature plant along with cotyledons enclosed within the seed coat okay it is enclosed in seed coat and having cotyledons the embryo is differentiated into cotyledons and embryo axis okay so you can see okay this is the cotyledon okay this structure is cotyledon if we talk about cotyledons also called seed leaves because if you see the, these are cotyledons these two okay see uh, it's look like a leaves so called as seed leaves they are either two in di uh, cotyledonous plants or one in monocotyledon plant in number they are food laden fleshy structures attached to the embryo's axis they provide nourishment to the embryo in the early stage of development in endospermic seeds cotyledons are not massive 
that is in example are castor if we talk about embryo axis it is young or miniature plant differentiated into the following parts okay embryo axis is uh, still we further divide it into mesocotyl apicotyl hypocotyl plumule so if you talk about mesocotyl it is a part of the embryo axis where cotyledons are attached apicotyl it is a portion of the embryo axis between the mesophyll and plumule hypocotyl it is a portion of the embryo between mesocotyl and radical as we uh, read further in this chapter we also uh, read about their functions also plumule it is the feathery or leafy end of the embryo axis that grows into shoot system of the plant okay i also want to tell you that plumule is responsible for the shoot formation and it's what come radical radical is responsible for the formation of root so here given also radical last it is the pointed lower end of the embryo axis that develops into the root system of a plant okay so now we read about the food stories in the seed the seed contain store food materials to be used during early development the food is stored either in the cotyledons or in a special food storage tissue called the endosperm okay i already uh, tell you about the endosperm its function is mainly to provide nourishment to the developing embryo in the process of double fertilization we were go through in detail about it the seeds in which food is stored in the cotyledons and contain no endosperm are called non endospermic or ex albuminous okay so uh, this is these are the terms which will be you have to understand and remember that what are non endospermic and endospermic non endospermic the seed in which food is stored in the cotyledons and contain no endosperm okay are called that's why non endospermic so these seeds are bean gram pea alsima okay example are there castor cotton maize wheat rice okay whereas those seed contain food in that uh, endosperm are called endospermic or albuminous seed so uh, here is not given properly that these are the example of endospermic seed it means they contain endosperm okay castor cotton maize mainly monocotyledons having endosperm so if we talk about now types of seeds depending upon the number of cotyledons and presence or absence of endosperm seeds are classified as shown in table 5.1 so there are two types of seed first is dicotyledons okay and second one is monocotyledonous dicotyledonous uh, in these comes ex albuminous without endosperm bean gram pea etc and albuminous okay castor cotton etc having endosperm castor and cotton and in monocotyledons only one cotyledon is there without endosperm that is alsima and having endosperm albuminous maize wheat rice etc okay now uh, we have to discuss about the structure of bean seed or dicotyledon ex albuminous seed and a maize seed according to your syllabus which is monocotyledonous first we talk about structure of a bean so bean seeds are kidney shaped being convex on one side and concave on the other the following external features are seen in the bean seed first is seed coat okay bean is surrounded by two seed coats that develops from the integuments of the ovule mainly the development will be uh, take place through integuments okay and these structures are mainly uh, as we read in the introduction part that are found in the seeds so first is testa it is outer smooth thick and colored protective layer it protects the seed from fungi bacteria and insects we already read about it tegmen it is a thin a white membrane like in her seed coat it is very firmly fused with the testa it is often very difficult to separate from the testa 
helium on the concave side of the seed is present a scar called helium it is the point from where the seed is attached to the pod with the help of a short stalk called funiculus on maturity the funiculus detached and leaves behind this scar okay so mainly the same structure now comes to the micropyle okay adjacent to the helium is present a very minute pore called micropyle absorption of water and exchange of gases takes place through it okay and raphe it is a ridge like structure present around the median groove it represents the portion of stalk which remains fused with the testa okay to study the internal structure of bean seed it is soaked in water for a few hours the soaking makes the seed coat soft and easy to remove on removing the seed coat we find the embryo okay so it is the internal structure the embryo consists of the following parts first is cotyledons okay the bulk of uh, embryo consists of two flashy structures called cotyledons these store the food and provide nourishment to the developing embryo axis the bean seeds do not contain endosperm and thus are non endospermic then is embryo axis if we talk about okay it is i have mesocotyl part of embryo axis where cotyledons are attached laterally epicotyl portion of the embryo axis between mesocotyl and plumule it is the same thing we already discussed about it so students if you see the structure of bean seed okay you can easily see its external features okay bean easily available in your home and you can see also outermost part is testa okay this is the minute pore like structure micropyle okay when you uh, soaked in in water you can easily see this micropyle and helium a scar like uh, structure present here okay then if you see its internal structure okay dividing it into two parts you usually see two cotyledons there okay red cotyledon leaf like structure these two okay this is the apicotyl and hypocotyl is here and this is radical okay and it is plumule so whatever we are talking about in the their structure and you can easily understand by uh, seeing this structure of bean seed okay next is structure of maize seed so if you see there is only one no one structure is there okay only this one structure only one cotyledon is there okay external appearance if you they see point of attachment to cope here position of embryo is there okay and one endosperm also found in that because it is endospermic seed so if it uh, see the ls of seed or internal structure you can see first one is pericarp and seed coat okay it is fused and this is endosperm okay uh, one layer is found ali aluron layer this layer is rich in protein okay and one scutellum is found just beneath this layer so this scutellum mainly it's cotyledon okay which can uh, which uh, not uh, contain food any and these are the structured plumule okay radical and this cholerizer this cholerizer is the protective covering of this radical so these are the structure of maize and bean you studied today and i hope that you will understand whatever we will be talk in further classes so it's easy to understand these things okay you have to read this in detail from your book also structure of maize seed okay if you have any confusion you can ask me thank you